In this problem, we are going to be dealing with the ground state, which corresponds to the case where n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0, and m is equal to 0. And then we want to look for the most probable value of r. So what that means is that if you have your 3D coordinates, and then you detect your particle, you detect the position of your particle, let's say it's over here, it's going to have a certain distance r from the origin. So what we want to find is the most probable distance that you're going to get when you detect the position of the particle. So in order to do this, we are going to need the probability density function of r. And the probability density function of r, I'm going to call it f of r, is actually equal to r square times the absolute value square of r10. So if you don't know why this is the probability density function, we can actually show it rather easily. So let's say uh, if we have, let's say f of r is a probability density function. If we want to find a probability that we will detect a particle at a distance between a and b away from the origin, what we would do is that we would integrate the probability density function from a to b dr. So this is what, how we would expect a probability density function to behave. And then given a wave function, if we wanted to obtain this probability, what we would do is that we would take the wave function, so in this case, xi100, r theta phi, and then we would square this, and then we would integrate this. And then we would integrate it throughout the region where this condition, this condition is satisfied. And that will be the condition where for dr, it ranges from a to b. And then for the angular components, we can just put down 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. So if we wanted to find this probability, this is what we would do. And then don't forget, we can actually break up this function xi into two parts. We have the radial component as well as the angular component. And then don't forget, we can always break up this integral into two parts. So we can break this up into the integral for the angular component. So sine theta d theta d phi, and as well as the component for the, for the radial component. So we have r squared r10 r absolute value squared dr. And then we know that this function itself is uh, going to be normalized. So that's why this whole term over here is just going to be equal to 1, so we can just ignore it. And so you can see that if we want to find the probability of finding the particle at a distance between a and b from the origin, all we have to do is to consider this integral. And if you compare the form of this integral with this other integral over here, you can see that r square, r10 square, is actually the probability density function. You can just compare these two terms over here. And so that is why r square r10 square is the probability density function. So using the probability density function, it tells us the corresponding probability of uh, how much uh, how probable it is to find the particle for any given value of r. So given this function, we can now try to maximize this function to find the most probable value of r. So let's do that. So let's take f of r. And then we're going to have to substitute in the expression for r10. So r10 is just equal to 1 over square root of pi a to the power of 3, e to the power of negative r over a. So you can look this up in the book. And then all we have to do is to square this. So this term over here is the probability density function. So now what we need to do is to maximize this. So in order to maximize this, we take the derivative. And then we are going to look for stationary points. So these constants, I'm just going to pull these out. And then now, in order to uh, differentiate this, I'm going to use the product rule. So this becomes 2r. And then I will differentiate this. So it becomes negative 2 over a. And you can see that I can pull out some terms. I can pull out a 2 and then pull out a negative 2r over a. So this becomes r and then this becomes negative r squared over a. And then we want this to be equal to 0. And you can see that for this term to be equal to 0, these are just constants. This is just a constant. This won't be equal to 0. So in order for this whole term to be equal to 0, it's going to have to depend on this expression over here. 
So we are going to consider cases where r minus r squared over a is equal to 0. And you can see that there are two possibilities. You can have r is equal to 0 and r is equal to a. So you can first of all, you can check that r is equal to 0 is definitely not a maximum. Because if you substitute this back into the probability density function, you're going to get 0. So you have a 0 probability of finding the particle at a distance of 0 from the origin. So this is not the uh, maximum. And so that means this has to be the maximum. And you can easily show that this is true by considering the graph. So if you would graph the probability density function, we know that at r is equal to 0, this is just equal to 0. And then you can see that when r tends to infinity, this is also going to tend towards 0. And then you know that this function is continuous throughout from 0 to infinity. And so you know that at a point, r is equal to a at this very point over here, uh, th there is going to be a stationary point, and we will have a derivative that is equal to 0. So what's going to ha what this means is that it's going to start at uh, this function is going to start up at 0, it's going to grow uh, up to a certain point, and then it's going to eventually come down and then asymptotically approach 0 as it tends towards infinity, as r tends towards infinity. And so this, you can, through this way, you can reason that at the very point r is, is, is equal to a, this very point has to be the maximum. And so this is how we can show it. You, now you know that at uh, r, is, r equal to a is the most probable value of r.